Okay, so I've been using the Turn the Evolution transmitter for the last five months and there's really a lot of stuff I really love about the transmitter and that's why it is my main transmitter right now. But then there are these things that are just super annoying. So today I thought I would make a more extensive review and help all you guys on the fence out. So starting off, one of the things I love is how small it is. I can easily carry this in my bag. Because it's quite cheap, I don't need to worry about breaking it in the bag as much as I would with something like a Tyrannis or the 8010, which was the transmitter I went from. So the quad is getting pretty chilly out here and me too actually so let's go inside and take a closer look at this transmitter. So taking a closer look, this is what the transmitter looks like. And I was actually surprised over high, how high quality it actually feels when I first got it. The plastic feels very rigid and it doesn't flex at all. Beyond that, it also got some heft to it. Now a lot of the weight is distributed here in, in the screen part, which is a bit annoying because that means it kind of tips over quite easily. But it's okay, I guess. And I really like that it has the weight to it. It's super small and one of the things I love about it beyond that is the fact that it feels so nice in your hands. At least for me it fits my hands just perfectly. And it feels like this is really the way transmitters should be shaped. It also comes with this cover which I have hydro dipped so that's why, why it looks like this. But this cover is actually very useful because when you pop it on the screen is completely protected from scratches and the gimbals are protected as well. So no longer do you need these 3D printed uh, gimbal protectors which you would need for uh, something like the Tyrannis or basically any other radio. And that's really nice so I can really just put this inside my bag together with all of the other stuff and I don't really have to worry about it. And that's also because of the fact that this is a very cheap radio. And I think that's kind of interesting about this product because it's in the price range of the cheap Fly Sky radios, but at the same time it's competing against other more expensive radios. For instance, I went from the Radiolink AT10, which is a much more expensive radio, and still I'm very satisfied with this radio and happily did the switch. And that's really because it does a lot of things right, like for instance, the build quality and the overall feel and the convenience of it. So let's turn it on and you do that by pressing this button for like 5 seconds. And this is one of the annoying things about this radio. It takes a lot of time to turn on and you really need to hold this for a while. It's a, it's a small thing but it's pretty annoying and you'll see a common theme around this uh, transmitter that it has like these really annoying like small little quirks. It doesn't really matter in the long run but they're like small things to take, consider. So one of those things is that it turns on quite slowly, especially compared to my Radiolink 8010. As you can see it has these light up gimbals which are, which look really cool actually and you can change the colors of them and you can also have them fade between different colors. Although the customization is quite limited there. So uh, one of the first things you'll notice is this interface here and there's not a lot of buttons so the way you navigate is actually through touch which actually works really well. The screen feels kind of cheap, like it doesn't really look very well, it's not very high resolution and it doesn't have colors, but it's very good especially for the price. And to be honest, I do prefer this, uh, this interface compared to the 8010 or something like the Tyrannis, even though it has less pixels and less colors, just because of the fact that it's so easy to navigate and the touch feels really seamless. The interface is also very snappy and it doesn't really take any time to load anything. One really annoying thing about the interface though is I have to scroll way down to get to the select model. And let's say I go into the select model mode and I try to change it here. I can only see the number which I'm changing to and I can't actually see the name of that craft. Which is really annoying. Now, 
there can only be five, so I have memorized like which are where, but yeah, it's something quite annoying, to be honest. And talking about that with the five models, that's and that's like one of the ma major complaints about this radio. However, you can actually connect several receivers to the same model, so it isn't really a problem, although I like to be able to change it. And then I actually need a lot of models because some of them are actually different in the setup. For instance, I have a mode for my DJ Phantom 1, which has some specific endpoints and stuff like that. And then I also have my plane, which is also different because I've switched the channel outputs on the, on that one. So, so we definitely need a few models, but five is plenty, especially considering you can bind several to one model. So I don't really think, think that that's a problem. However, one thing that is a problem with this radio is that you have no channel mixing. So this is a radio strictly for quads. Now you can use it for planes, but it's definitely not made for that. Then you'll need something like a separate channel switcher or like a Arduino, which I used in my airplane video. You can check that out if you want to. So let's talk about the gimbals for a while. So these gimbals feel okay I guess, but one thing I don't really like about them is that they move with very little resistance and for me that's a problem because I have trouble doing these really small movements. And I do really prefer the gimbals that I had on the Radiolink AT10. Also the throw is kind of weak, especially in the pitch axis and the throttle axis which is kind of annoying. I've seen people switch these out for Hall Effect gimbals and that is definitely something I'll be thinking about doing in the future so stay tuned for a video like that. But in general I feel like I can't really ask for Hall Effect gimbals on this or very large gimbals because it's a cheap transmitter, we cannot forget the price tag on this one. And that's the problem with this transmitter, it's a cheap entry level transmitter. It's not meant to replace the Tranis and it's not meant to replace other more expensive transmitters. And that's kind of the problem because I really love this transmitter and I feel like there's so many good things about this one that I can't use something else. So I would really like to see like a pro version of the Turn the Evolution with some Hall Effect gimbals which are a lot bigger and with more resistance and more throw. And I would also like to see a way better display, a bigger display with some colors and higher resolution. I would also like to see features like channel mixing and customizing of the software. But I guess all of these things are things to be expected in a more expensive radio. So I just hope that this radio can be a great inspiration for other manufacturers to create a similar radio. So the Turn the Evolution has this USB port here which is used for charging. Now for some people they might see this as a huge con because you can't actually replace the batteries but if you ask me it's not really a big deal because it's really easy to charge it this way you can charge from like something like a power bank and so on. And also when you connect it to the simulator you can actually just use the USB port. You don't need one of these adapters which is so convenient and that means that you're actually charging the battery while flying the simulator. So in these last couple of months I've only needed to charge the controller twice which is pretty awesome. <laughs> So on the Turn the Evolution you can't actually connect your next strap because it doesn't have a mount for it and that's kind of annoying. At the same time it's really lightweight and really grippy so it isn't that big of an issue but yeah it would be nice to see that in the next version. On top of that it doesn't have this rail system that transmitters usually have. It's kind of nice because it makes it a lot smaller but what's not very nice about it is that it's hard to mount it to the wall or to mount other accessories on top of it. So of course there's a solution for that. Uh, I made this little hanger here which you can download on my Thingiverse, link in the description below. Another problem with the Turn the Evolution is, is that at some point you're probably gonna want to get one of these really tiny micro quads like a tiny whoop or this H8 which I have modded with a, fly, with a turn the evolution receiver. Now if you're interested in that you can check the video I'll have a card right here. Anyway the problem is that there's no flight controllers at least at this date which has a built-in turn the evolution compatible receiver. 
and that's really a problem because then you need to add one of these micro receivers and it adds a bit of weight and a bit of complexity while building. On top of that you cannot really get any bind and fly uh, tiny whoops or small crafts like this because they simply won't bind to the transmitter. And that's really a bummer. So that's definitely some, something to consider. Okay, so I guess that is basically all of my thoughts on this transmitter and I think it's a very interesting transmitter and for me at least the pros definitely weigh up the cons. Now you'll have to make your choice and you'll have to see for yourself if, if these pros are actually important to you or maybe you think other things that this radio doesn't have are more important. But I would definitely recommend this one especially for a entry level pilot who's looking for a simple radio to use with racing quads. If you're looking for a more versatile radio with customization and you want to be able to fly a lot of planes and all sorts of stuff with it, then I would not recommend this controller. But if you want simplicity, a small form factor and a overall, overall very nice and cheap radio, then this is definitely the radio for you. So I hope you guys liked this review slash rant and I really do love this transmitter. I think it's an awesome transmitter but it definitely has its quirks. So let's see and let's hope that they release a pro version of this in the future and I'll be on it right away. Anyway that's it for this time and I'll see you in the next video.